Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooksburg Zoo. In today's episode we are going to continue to build on our Oceania house uh, which we started building in the last episode uh, and we gave our kiwi birds a new home in there. So I thought about what we will or what we can do with this house and first of all I wanted to build a habitat for the platypus in there but uh, things didn't work out as I was planning them but yeah more on that on a later stage just let us have a look at our kiwi birds first before we continue going into building stuff yeah here's the little habitat for uh, the kiwis you can see the outdoor habitat right here and the house on the opposite side of the path you can enter the house on the lower path go into there and uh, walk up the stairs and walk out to the elevated path on the other side of the house the kiwis can walk underneath the path into their outdoor habitat that was something that I had in mind for quite some time and I wanted to yeah I built something like this and I'm pretty happy with how the habitat turned out and the whole building as well so as I said in this episode we are going to continue to build in our Oceania house. I usually wanted to have some kind of a platypus habitat right here next uh, or on the opposite side of the kiwi birds but uh, yeah it wasn't that easy because I wanted to have something like an underwater viewing area and also wanted to have an area where people actually can see the animals on dry land. Um, yeah but to manage to get an underwater viewing area on this level and as well an area where you can see the animals on land was not really possible. I tried so many different things and I just was not happy with it at all. We're going to have a platypus habitat in here. Uh, that being said, the main problem that I had with building this or with trying to build this was the level of, yeah, the water level um, in there. Because you know you can only have water in there on a meter level. So one meter, two meters, three meters, four meters and there is no such thing as a water level between this and this makes things pretty difficult if you try to build realistic and if you build things yeah a little bit more on the smaller side like this building right here if you don't want to have huge buildings and try to build more realistic uh, it is it is very hard to do that with yeah with some parts of the game but especially with the water level so what I decided in the end was uh, that we are going to have uh, a habitat for the wombat instead of the platypus right there but you can also already see that we have this round shaped piece uh, right next to the wombat. Uh, first I thought we're going to have a huge only indoor habitat for the wombats and don't give them any outdoor area. I changed the plans. Um, yeah and I thought that it would make sense or would be very cool if we would have the platypus habitat right there and this is going to be just the underwater viewing area this round shaped thing and I'm trying to have um, yeah a part of uh, the land area as well visible for our visitors I just don't know how to manage that but we're going to see that in the next episode which is going to be very exciting I have once again I have pictures in my head but I don't know yet if I can make them to reality in the next episode but I will try my best to 
and um, I'm very excited because I think this house will really be great um, because we are also going to have the walkthrough area for our flying foxes and also um, yeah combined with koalas that is the plan right now and wallabies uh, which are going to have an outdoor area as well so just for the koalas and the wallabies uh, the flying foxes uh, will not be able to go outside um, yeah as they are restricted to the walkthrough habitat um, yeah but I'm very very excited for that and I hope that everything will work out just the way that I planned it um, yeah we will see in the next two episodes I guess yeah so here's the part that I did plan for uh, the land area for the platypus uh, yeah we will see if this will be possible uh, I thought about having the upper part of our path going over there so that you can see the platypus on land but the path is not high enough to go over there so that we have an elevated viewing area so uh, those two paths would collide so the lower one and the upper one and um, yeah I just don't know how to manage this but uh, I'm pretty sure that we will find a solution in the next episode for that problem yeah, here I was laying out the ground structure of the building a little bit more uh, because we are going into the walkthrough area later on um, in the later episodes and I wanted to have the walls in there so that I can already see how the whole building is going to look. Um, also putting in this in-game glass fence here um, for the pool for the platypus and uh, yeah then I think we are going into building the actual habitat for the wombats yeah here yeah. trying to make both sides look not identically but uh, at least as if they were siblings 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 ah, you know what i mean yeah and giving the building a little bit of shape in here as well Uh, yeah, in the later stage of the video, we will have a little bit of a problem with the traversable area for the wombats. Um, we know that from episodes in the past. Um, I think about uh, what was it called? The franchise series that I was uh, having. Um, the Australian one where we had the wombats in as well because uh, yeah this door that I was building for the animals is not big enough so that they can leave the house actually so we had to change that on a later stage a little bit and uh, give them more space which was a little bit annoying because the wombats are small animals and I just didn't know how it would be possible for the animals to take so much space in here uh, yeah but it is what it is we made it work in the end and that's the most important fact. Yeah, I also wanted uh, to have this part of the building a little bit lower than the front part of the building, just to give it a more interesting shape and uh, make it look a little bit modern. I'm not quite sure yet about uh, the roof that we are going to have for this building. 
Um, right now I used those limestone pieces to build a roof out of it. I don't know if I want some kind of a glass roof in the middle of the building to uh, give it a little bit more light and make things a little bit more brighter on the inside. Um, I just don't know if this would work or if we should have a yeah, uh, some kind of a concrete uh, roof or something like that. Uh, but I fear the building would be very dark inside and that is something that I usually don't want. Uh, that's because I used lots of those windows outside um, uh, to get more light into the inside of the building. And uh, yeah, we will, we will see in the further episodes how this will turn out and for which roof uh, I'm going to go for. Yeah, here's going to be the first exit of the building. As I told you guys, I wanted to have this exit here on this side. Um, you can have a view at the indoor habitat for the flying foxes and the koalas and uh, the wallabies as well. And uh, in a later stage with the elevated path, you're going to enter the building once again. Uh, where you can then walk down the stairs and back to the main path uh, where you can leave the uh, Oceania area then as well. Yeah, just closing some gaps in here. Yeah, I'm changing this in a later stage as well because I want something like a planted area right on top of it where you have this fence around and some smaller plants in there uh, when you can look down into the habitats of the kiwi birds and uh, the koalas and wallabies. Yeah, and I thought it would make totally sense if we would have the outdoor habitat for uh, the wombats. As I told you guys in the beginning of the video, I was thinking about an only indoor habitat for them, which would absolutely make sense because the wombats also are nocturnal animals, so you usually don't see them that much uh, during the daytime. Uh, but yeah, in the end I thought Let's give them a small outdoor habitat that would be perfect for this entrance area to the building so that you can already see some animals out there and uh, want to go in there to see a little bit more of them. So this is, uh, it is like a nocturnal house but not just nocturnal because we do have the kiwis in there, the wombats and the platypus which are also um, I hope I'm right, uh, which are also mainly nocturnal, uh, but we also do have uh, the koalas then and uh, yeah, the wallabies, which are not, so it's not like mainly nocturnal house, it's uh, more like a mixed variety show in there. <laughs> Yeah, and as I'm building this new building here, I'm also thinking about a new mini-series on my channel um, uh, that I would love to call Let's Build a House. Because I noticed in, um, yeah, in the last few months that I'm always coming up with some ideas for animal houses and I really love to build those houses. Um, although. I do hate it as well, if this makes sense. Um, yeah, but I thought this would be a great idea just to not build a whole zoo, but just build an animal house. 
um, which we are going to focus on in about five or six episodes uh, per uh, per house, uh, which we are going to build for different animals. And uh, then I will put it on the workshop so that you guys can use it in your zoos as well. Um, you can tell me in the comment section what you think about that, if you think this would be a great idea, if you would be interested to uh, see this or uh, download the houses from the workshop as well. So uh, I'm going to think about that. Uh, don't know yet if it's going to be in English or in German language. Um, yeah, we will, we will see. But the main focus still will uh, will be on Brooksburg and Litchfield uh, right at the moment, as long as we are not finished with both of these zoos. Um, so I also thought about uh, making some uh, changes, and with uh, City Skylines 2 coming up tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be tomorrow. I'm going to get the game and I'm also trying to do some footage on my YouTube channel. So if you guys are interested in this, uh, you might be able to see something about uh, City Skylines 2 on Friday this week. I hope so. And um, if you like it, we're going to continue with uh, building in City Skylines 2. So doing doing a little bit different, nothing uh, really suit related, and uh, but still in in a similar uh, genre, and I'm looking very much forward to it because I'm very excited for this. Um, I already played City Skylines one, um, but I played it on PlayStation. Uh, and I really like the game and I'm very very curious to see what uh, what the second part is uh, going to be and uh, yeah can't wait to play this game with you guys Oh, and I forgot to mention it in the beginning of the video and we are almost more than half through the video. So uh, this would be a great time for you guys if you didn't already to hit the like button for this video if you enjoyed it. And also to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done that. We are close to 1,400 subscribers, which is so great and so unbelievable to me because I was starting this channel two years ago and uh, yeah, two years now into YouTube and uh, yeah, doing actively present you guys with, uh, with some videos mainly focused on Planet Zoo is such a cool thing that, um, yeah, that uh, we are already this much in here and I really enjoy this and I really love to do this stuff with you guys and I hope to do this many, many, many years more and uh, yeah, always come up with new things on this channel. So thank you for that. Yeah, and it is great that this building is in an angle where I actually could put in some of those trees so that we don't have that much shade on the building and don't make it too dark in there. So I hope this will stay this way in the future as well when we are going to continue and finish the building. Um, yeah, just <laughs> just keeping my fingers crossed that, uh, that this will... Uh, yeah, be possible. And I really love how the outdoor habitat for the wombats looks already. Um, I really love the new plants that we got in this game. And I really enjoy to do those, uh, yeah, those scenery work in here for the habitats uh, almost as much as I did for the arid animal pack with those uh, desert environments. So um, I always loved doing this. 
yeah, this the scenery stuff, uh, landscaping and uh, putting foliage in there and uh, rocks and stuff like that. But yeah, the more this uh, game evolves and uh, the more plants and rocks and stuff we get, the more I enjoy doing this. Yeah, so here for the entrance, I decided we're going to have an entrance uh, from the outside of the building. Uh, usually, in uh, if it would be very realistic, you would have the entrance on the inside of the building. But there was no place where I could put the entrance, uh, especially when we have the um, platypus habitat right next to it. We're going to have very much difficulties with the water level and stuff like that so I decided we're going to have an entrance from the outside of the building so I had to delete some of these rocks to make it work and have a proper entrance for our keepers into the habitat so I bought the two wombats that are going to move in and then I put down the roof for the wombat habitat but not for the main building yet um, as I told you guys I don't have that many ideas already uh, what to do in there and um, yeah we're going to try it in the next episode I think with what looks best and makes the building not too dark I also think of a different color so maybe something darker on top of it like a uh, black or darkish brown or something like that uh, that would make a great contrast maybe some more glass pieces somewhere but not uh, the whole building covered in glass um, yeah I just don't know we'll see in the next episode signage we're also going to have some decoration in the building as well but I think we're going to wait with this until the whole building is finished that makes it uh, a little bit more easier to make it look cohesive everywhere so here's the animals and you already can see the animals can't leave the house the door is too small for them so I tried to make it a little bit bigger so that they might be able to go outside you might think this would be totally enough for them but no still not enough so I thought it might be because of the rocks or the grass in there so that they couldn't walk outside but that was not the case I had to make the door still bigger and bigger and bigger yeah, but I think this was it then. Yeah, now they were able to go outside and reach everything in their habitat. Yeah, and I just wanted to lower down those glass pieces for the kiwis as well because I thought those pieces looked a little bit weird. Um, with being so much higher than uh, the actual um, yeah, wall pieces that we have in there so I decided to go a little bit lower at least at, uh, at, uh, at one side of the habitat then I noticed I forgot about the animal enrichment, food enrichment and toy enrichment so I had to place some things in there to make our wombats be happy and here you can see they are at 97% happiness so this is really really great um, yeah and with that being said 
、um, that is a question that most of the people always ask, or many people always ask,、um, with the plants that we put in our habitats in here in Brooksburg or in any other zoo, because usually I don't put the plants in there that the animal actually wants or needs. Um, so um, continent-wise or、uh, terrain-wise or stuff like that, the animals don't really care for that.、Um, that will give you, yeah, you won't be able to get the chance to satisfy them for a hundred percent, but they will be absolutely fine with having more plants in the habitat or、uh, different plants than they actually are used to in the natural、uh, natural environment. So, with that being said, we are back in the real-time part. We're going to have a look at our habitat and our animals. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did so, then leave a like, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any further episodes, and tune in next week as well when we are going to continue in Brooksburg Zoo's Oceania House. So, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.